Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. It's time for yet another smashingly large system for fluids, and welcome to New Omnifactory Super Shorts. We're getting ready to make micro circuits, the final form of the tier 2 circuits. These are pretty easy, except that they need epoxy circuit boards. For these, I need epoxy sheets, which means I'm going to need epoxy resin. So that's what we're going to work on today. People who do not do a fully passive run don't need to automate everything for circuits, or even passive circuits at all, but there is one thing commonly recommended to automate, and it is the circuit boards, because they are the slowest process, usually, of creating any kind of special circuit. For epoxy resin, we're going to need sodium hydroxide dust, which I've been getting from electrolyzing salt water, bisphenol A, which you get from hydrochloric acid, acetone, and phenol, and epichlorohydrin, which although you can get it from glycerol, which is a plant-based method, you can also get it from allyl chloride, which comes from propene. Don't mind me, I'm just plopping my salt ore here so that it can start running. Oh wait, yep, and it'll start macerating and I can start getting more chlorine because I'm a little bit low on that. It's all stuck in my hydrochloric acid grater. I am no longer trashing sodium hydroxide. I have no idea why I was doing such a thing. But now we have it from our electrolyzer and it'll be useful for epoxy resin. It'll also be useful for epichlorohydrin because we're going to be using the recipe using hypochlorous acid and allyl chloride. I'm going to filter this electrolyzer on salt water because we're going to get excess salt water from our epoxy resin system. The epichlorohydrin and the epoxy resin both grant us 2,000, 1,000 salt water each. Also, for some reason, I'm not extracting chlorine from this electrolyzer at all, which I think is a bit silly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have chlorine extract into my applied energistics fluid system and then extract the chlorine and hydrogen both out into the advanced chemical reactor. I'll extract on blue out of the advanced electrolyzer to get the salt and hyd the chlorine and hydrogen to the proper place, and then I'll put an insert on brown to get chlorine and hydrogen into the advanced chemical reactor again. Apparently I have an excess of chlorine or something from somewhere, and I have no idea where it's coming from, but I'm sure it's a good thing. I've installed a fluid terminal, which has a fairly easy recipe, and let me just show it to you. It looks like this. You require a lapis plate, and then of course some of the stuff that you're used to. To extract and in insert fluids, you can use any fluid container and just click on a fluid to fill up your bucket. And then you can click back into the terminal to empty it. You can also use things like a steel drum, but to extract, say, 64 buckets at once actually drains the, ener the network's power completely. So what you should do to be able to do so is install something like a dense energy cell, which isn't too expensive, um, and that will store energy for you so that, in in so that when you want to do big operations like that, you don't lose all the energy in your system all of a sudden. Now back to epoxy resin. Epoxy resin, bisphenol A requires one bucket of hydrochloric acid, and epichlorohydrin requires one bucket of allyl chloride, and you can get both, one bucket, one bucket, from one bucket of propene and two buckets of chlorine. So as not to let these fluids get extracted out into the wider system of my ender IO fluid conduits, I'm going to isolate them and route these directly into the relevant machines for epoxy resin. For the hypochlorous acid, we can either use chlorine and water directly and get some extra stuff, or we can get a lot of hypochlorous acid at a much lower rate, uh, or at a much um, easier rate, if we add mercury to the mix. To get mercury, I'm going to have one electrolyzer on redstone. I've done some calculations to determine that one MV electrolyzer is enough to supply my mercury needs. I'll throw out the silicon into the right place, trash the pyrite, and use the ruby dust for eventual chrome electrolysis. I can get the acetone for bisphenol A either using a chemical react, an HV chemical reactor, um, an acetic acid, or I can use a fluid heater from calcium acetate solution and acetic acid, um, and I can get the calcium from bone meal. To get acetic acid, there are a couple different methods. Um, I can use methanol, I can use ethylene and oxygen, but I think the method that uses the resources I have best is carbon monoxide, because you can make carbon monoxide from, um, excuse me, from carbon dioxide in an extra piece of carbon. I'm already creating a lot of carbon dust here, of course. I'm told I need to stockpile carbon at some point, however, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to package up these tiny piles of carbon dust I'm getting from the distillation tower and make sure I have those on access as well. And eventually I'm going to have an episode all about storing and buffering items for future, high, high, far, far future needs. I've made a terrible mistake. I'm currently voiding hydrogen, which means that this advanced chemical reactor 2 is constantly running and creating hydrogen that's just getting voided. So what I'm going to have to do is create something called a level emitter to stop the production of hydrogen when I don't actually need it. Although I do, base, I do want to upgrade this fluid storage cell to contain more hydrogen because I am in need of lots and lots and lots of hydrogen, so I probably want to, to increase the amount anyway. 
But anyway, acetic acid, that's going to be carbon monoxide and hydrogen in a chemical reactor. Um, and again, none of these things are really HV, and so that carbon monoxide, that's also going to be pretty easy. The machines this comes out to is seven reactor, chemical reactors, one fluid heater, one electrolyzer, and one mixer. So I'll be right back after I make all those. Ah, beautiful, beautiful cutting machine. I'm going to filter this new loot fabricator on pristine skeleton matter, and then we should be able to create bones this way. And bones are what I'm going to use to get bone meal, of course. Um, we'll, I think we'll just pulverize them as that's the easiest thing it looks like to get bone meal. We'll also need a centrifuge to turn that bone meal into calcium for the sake of the acetone. That would be the last of my refined processors, but luckily I've been crafting 32 more. Anyway, this is going to be a sum total of many machines. We'll run our main line ender IO fluid conduits up these two corners, and we'll link those up to the main network, but there'll be an individual um, set of fluid conduits just for the hydrochloric and allo chlorides. So this here will be our um, allo chloride and hydrochloric acid um, chemical reactor, and then here we'll have epichlorohydrin and bisphenol A, and he'll be our epoxy resin. So I'll start filtering those promptly as soon as I get a huge amount of basic fluid filters. So the bottom chemical reactor will be filtered on propene and chlorine for the allo chloride and hydrochloric acid. And to be safe, we'll run the two output fluids using purple conduits, just, just, just in case. Our epichlorohydrin will get allo chloride, and our bisphenol A should get the hydrochloric acid. So let me just filter that like so. We'll set up our redstone electrolyzer here with automatic fluid output to the top, and it'll output mercury into our hypochlorous acid creator. The electrolyzer will get redstone, of course. I've moved the item conduits to the left, but again, this electrolyzer will be filtered in on redstone. It'll extract rubidescent silicon into the main network, and it's going to extract pyrite as soon as I can get that directly into a trash can. Redstone is now going into this electrolyzer. This hypochlorous chemical reactor will receive as filter water and chlorine. And then we already have access to phenol and hydrochloric acid for the bisphenol A, so it's time to work on acetone. Let's watch all this stuff get extracted. There's our first ruby dust, and our pyrite should have gotten trashed. Oh, it hasn't done that yet. Ah, you can't extract from the front face of a machine, so I'm going to have to change that, maybe to output the bottom. I'm not sure yet. Anyway, mercury is already in here. I'll shift right click on the side here to get it to move, and then I think the pyrite should get deli- hmm, it hasn't done so. I just had to break and replace it. Okay, I think my actual mistake was not setting this trash can to insert. Now, bone meal is used for almost nothing except for making calcium, so I'm going to set this mace reader to automatically export to the bottom, and I'm not actually going to extract out of it, I'm just going to insert. Great, bone meal is now being centrifuged into calcium dust. As far as I can tell, calcium is also used for very little. So in the interest of using fewer conduits, I'm going to use, I'm going to place my mixer that's going to turn calcium into ac calcium acetate solution just right here. I can find no other use for carbon monoxide other than to create acetic acid, so we're going to have it auto output to the top on fluid, and so we'll, we'll filter this, uh, this fluid filter on carbon dioxide. Oh no, I can explain why naphtha has filled up this fluid interface. It is because naphtha is also coming from a distillation tower on cracked heavy fuel, which I recently added to the filter as I needed to. Um, so I'm going to create, I'm going to partition another fluid um, storage cell, hopefully for naphtha. I think it's this one. As I now need to use the carbon dioxide coming from this chemical reactor, I'm going to filter the blue side here so that only hydrogen will be pulled out, and then I'm going to pull out a, a brown um, on carbon dioxide. It will not be on round robin. I'm going to use a priority system for it. And carbon dioxide should get placed into this advanced chemical reactor shortly, as long as I... I'm sorry. Oh yes, I need to connect the fluid pipes to the system in order for this to work. Here we go, we're making hypochlorous acid in this chemical reactor, and we are getting chlorine into our allo chloride system, and now we should have carbon dioxide getting input into our chemical reactor here. Come on, give it a second. Hmm. I had carbon dioxide on this trash can, so that's where it was going. Anyway, now it's going here. And so is carbon. And the carbon monoxide is going here, which will be chemical reacting into acetic acid using hydrogen. So let me filter this on hydrogen, I'll get back to you plus our integrated circuit on configuration 1, and we should start getting our acetic acid. Eventually, you will use this for ethanone, which is going to be used for 
tetranitromethane, which will make us nitro diesel, which will make us draconium, but we don't need that yet. So right now I'm just going to dump it straight into our mixer. Calcium is going in here, and then I'll set this to auto output fluid, and here we should get our calcium acetate solution. We can apparently distill it for one bucket of acetone and carbon dioxide, but I think for now I'm just going to fluid heat it, because creating an entire distillation tower for this one fluid doesn't seem like a great idea. Again, we'll set this to auto output to the top, and as soon as I put on my integrated circuit, I should start getting my acetone. We'll filter our bisphenol A on phenol and acetone, and hopefully the phenol should get in here soon. I should check uh, my phenolic system here to see if it's still extracting always active. It is, so that's strange. I wonder why it hasn't gone in yet. Ah, haven't said to insert. There we go. It looks like we can actually turn acetone directly into ethanone, so we're just going to keep acetone as the final result of this system, I think. I'll put my hypochlorous acid into the fluid filter for the advanced chemical reactor, and then set it to extract, always active, from here, and so I should get my hypochlorous acid. I'm going to grab a bucket of propene from this fluid terminal, and then I'll put it into this interface so that it can be pulled out, and then I'll go over here and filter the the bottom here for oh, okay it's already it's already going in perfect and then I'll filter sodium hydroxide for the epichlorohydrin and we should start getting that in perfect salt water is flowing out of this chemical reactor presumably into the place I told it to go we'll filter epichlorohydrin and bisphenol A on this chemical reactor and they'll go in and then I'll add an item filter for the sodium hydroxide and then poof epoxy resin this is unreasonably exciting that will have enough sodium hydroxide is guaranteed because it takes three chlorine buckets to produce one bucket of epoxy resin, um, and each bucket of chlorine comes with one sodium hydroxide dust, um, and so since we only need two sodium hydroxide dust per epoxy resin, we should be fine. But anyway, now that that's done, as much as I want to make microcircuits right now, there are a couple weird things that need to go into it. We actually need to make an advanced selling machine, too. To do that, we need our first type of tier 4 circuit, which requires, uh, you know, some simple things, but also the SMD diodes, which require platinum, and so i got to explain that to you guys. Um, but what I would really like to do before I end this episode is to put um, hydrogen from a smaller fluid cell into a larger fluid cell. 4K ME fluid storage components are pretty easy. You just need three 1K storage components. I already had three fluid storage cells. You can just shift right click on a cell that's empty to get the component out of it. Don't try this in a cell that's full because I'm not sure if it deletes everything that's in the cell when you do this. One 4K ME fluid storage component. I'll partition it using a bucket of hydrogen. Look, I'm not cheating to get the hydrogen for once. Um, so the partitioning is easy. But in order to extract all the hydrogen from the current fluid storage cell and put it into the new one, I need something called an MEIO port. One MEIO port. So in this system, you can transfer stuff that's in a cell from to the network, or you can transfer it back. So you definitely want to partition a storage cell if you're going to be transferring in the reverse direction. We are going to replace our current hydrogen with a the old one. This is going to start filling up with hydrogen. And then we're going to put the full hydrogen in here, and hopefully it will start to flow out. That's my question. Turns out it's not working because my system has insufficient power. So now it is about time to add that dense energy cell to the network. Eight energy cells with a calculation processor will get us a dense energy cell which we will hook up to the network and watch it hopefully fill with 1.6 million AE, and when I shove my drive back in there, hopefully it'll all flood out very quickly without wasting my power. All right, here goes nothing. Okay, power isn't being wasted. Yes, and it's flooding out quickly. And then it gets dumped to the outside, and now we have a useful fluid storage cell. I think we let's, let's test whether we can shift right click this and lose what's in it. Yes! Okay, do not shift right click your cells if they have anything in them, or they'll probably die and lose everything. Last thing, our carbon dioxide may not be being used fast enough, so I'm going to increase the priority on this, and if it is so that my carbon dioxide isn't being used fast enough, I'm going to have the rest of it flow out into a fluid trash can. But yeah, we've done it! We have epoxy resin! How exciting! I'm so excited. Seriously, this is great. We'll be able to use it for so many wonderful things, particularly microcircuits, the, the final, the best tier 2 circuits. And after that, well, we have a bunch of other small projects. Most of them are in preparation for automating passive tier 1 micro miners and using them. But we're going to try and store lots and lots of things um, and have those ready for the far future when we need hundreds and thousands of certain materials. But we're going to want to do some stuff with AE2 patterns before that. 
so tomorrow's project is going to be, or the next, whatever this next episode goes about, the next episode's project is going to be to turn microcircuits into the third tier three circuits and then use those to make patterns or from polyethylene sheets for applied energistics too. And then, well, I don't know what we're going to do with those yet, but that's going to be fun. So yes, I will see you guys then. But for now, as always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.